what are the employment opportunities available at Kolhapur for the youth? Uh, Kolhapur, near to the cities, there have been located three MIDCs, uh, where the employment in manufacturing sectors is great opportunity is there. So, Akshay, I see that in your biodata, you have got PM scholarship. Yes, Can you elaborate? PM scholarship has been given by central government to promote technical education in wards and widows of uh, ex service people. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hello. Please Thank have you, a seat. Akshay. Yes, sir. What is your full name? Nirle Akshay Ashok. Nirle is my surname, sir. Nirle is your surname. Sir. And you belong to Kolapur. Kolapur is district. Uh, Akshay, tell us about what you have filled in your form. Tell us about it. Tell us about it. Tell us about it. Tell us about Hindi or English? English, sir. English. Tell me something. Some description about you right. that you have mentioned here. I am Nirle Akshay Ashok. I came from defense background family. I have done my schooling in my village itself. That is located in Kolhapur district of Maharashtra. And it is located in a border of Karnataka and Maharashtra. I graduated, I am graduated in a 2070 as a mechanical engineer. From two, uh, 2070 onwards, I started preparation for the defense services examinations. And from 2019 onwards, I started this journey towards the UPSC. And I am glad to tell you the panel member that I have been selected in CAPF 2020 examination with All India Rank 125. And now I am looking forward to join an IPS office. Perfect. Thank you. Your hobbies? My hobbies are swimming and compound strength exercises. And uh, your experience in employment? Uh, I have worked for uh, three months in uh, Phenolex Cables in 2018. That is all my uh, experience, sir. Mm. See, Akshay, you are from Kolhapur. Right, sir. When we uh, talk about Kolhapur, Kolhapur has been spice and all, you know. Hot. Yes, sir. What else do you know about Kolhapur that we are not knowing? Kolhapur is a place where the first uh, affirmative action towards the uh, socially uh, marginalized people was started by Shahu Maharaj. The, he came with some reservation, reservations for the uh, lower caste people, he built some hostels for them and he eventually started promoting uh, lower caste peoples to the administration. Second, Kolhapur is a place where the spiritual and religions is very flourished. All kind of religions have been flourished in the Kolhapur. It is a very peaceful people. People in a Kolhapur worship the goddesses Ambabai. And, uh, and in the modern age, sir, Kolhapur is known for its cooperative societies. Cooperative societies have been flourished and it has become the base for the economy in the Kolhapur districts. And it is also known as a sugar bowl of Maharashtra because there is a tremendous uh, sugarcane farming in a Kolhapur district. Uh, this is all, sir. And uh, I'm, if I am talking about the GI tags, then Kolapuri Chappal and Kolapuri Jagri has been given GI tag. And Kolapuri is known for its uh, food, the spicy foods, we, uh, the non -veg, especially the non veg food. Uh, we call in a local language it is the rasa, curry. Uh, white curry and red curry is very famous for uh, in Kolapur, sir. Okay. Kolapur me rasa curry. Perfect. Tell me, uh, what is. Uh, what are the employment opportunities available at Kolhapur for the youth? Yes, sir. Uh, Kolhapur, uh, near to the cities, there have been located three MIDCs, uh, where the manufacturing uh, opportunity, employment in manufacturing sectors uh, is great opportunity is there. Three uh, MIDCs, as I have told you, and recently also the service sectors has been also growing in Kolhapur. Many IT professionals have been who have been pastly working in Pune, they basically hail from the Kolhapur. They have started their own startups in Kolhapur itself. Apart from them, sir, agriculture, as I told you, is very flourish because it is situa situated on the banks of river Panchanga, Dudganga, and other such rivers. So there is a huge employment in uh, this agriculture also and agriculture allied activities. Factories, sugarcane factories and uh, food processing factories are also flourished in our uh, area, sir. So people generally get employment there also. Okay, you say there are three MIDCs, okay? Yes, sir. But do you have some technical institution there? Yes, sir. So that they can be skilled and having knowledge that and they can go for the yes, sir. MIDCs? With, yes, sir. With cooperative uh, societies, the technical institute, engineering colleges have also flourished in our region, sir. 
I have graduated in Kolhapur also and I have seen while graduations many students from rest of the Maharashtra used to come in they also uh, today also they comes in a uh, Kolhapur into various institute and they take the education so education sector is also at a good place in Kolhapur sir okay so the cultural heritage, heritage about Kolhapur can you share with me yes sir as I told the goddesses Ambabai is the goddesses what? for the whole uh, Kolhapur then uh, I would say the uh, there is an attachment towards the Pandarpur Waris, the Varkari Sampradaya, which is very base of the Maharashtra culture. Many 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 people from the Kolhapur used to go for the Waris, and there are other temples also, like uh, situated in the uh, Sayadri Hills, for example, Jyotiba Temple, and such other temples are there, sir. Okay. See, you are having employment opportunity at Kolhapur, you engineered from there in mechanical, right? Yes, sir. Still, you opted for civil services. Any specific reason for that? Uh, sir, the reason behind it, sir, uh, initially I came from a defense background family, so that was a dream, first of all. And when I you thought that uh, the defense uh, services will provide me such a platform where I can polish my leadership skill and I can serve the country in a better positions, mm -hmm. that is why I uh, opted for the defense mm -hmm. services examinations. But unfortunately, sir, after the several attempts, I could not make it in the SSB interviews. Uh, looking for the civil services and IPS particularly is, I think, my ways to serve these countries in a again a better positions. Mm -hmm. I am looking forward to join the central services uh, which are working for the national security, for example, sir, RAW, NIA, IBs, etc. Sir. What is, how do you differentiate civil services and defense services and your interest in it? Uh, first major difference is the uh, public interaction, sir. Defense services hardly get any public interactions, though there are some public interactions and uh, philanthropic activities which is carried by the defense service, defense organization in uh, areas like Jammu Kashmir to uh, gain kind of confidence in uh, Jammu Kashmir peoples and other peoples regarding the defense. Civil services are largely involved in the public interactions. They working, they working for to provide the services for a day to day life of the people. Mm -hmm. And they maintain sir, uh, civil services can be uh, said they are responsible for the internal security and defense services which are responsible for the external security. Perfect. Thank you, sir. So, Akshay, I see that in your biodata, you have got PM scholarship. Yes, ma'am. Can you elaborate what it what is it about PM yes, scholarship? Yes, uh, PM scholarship has been given by central government to promote uh, technical education in wards and widows of uh, ex service servicemen, ex servicemen people. Recently, it has been uh, widened. Scope has been widened, and uh, CAPF personnel has been also included in this scheme. In this scheme, the annually 24,000 uh, amount is given for the technical, the whoever apply for the technical education to promote uh, the technical education, as I said. Okay, Akshay, you are interested, you seem to be interested in lots of sports. Yes, uh, ma'am. Kabaddi, football, shooting ball. What yes, is shooting ball? In a volleyball, we passes the ball from one play, one person to the other person, and there are three passes at the one side is allowed in a volleyball. But in a shooting ball, sir, madam. Which is India's national game? Uh, hockey is the India's national game. Do you think Kabaddi should be India's national game? Kabaddi can be promoted at a national level, uh, national level, madam. But uh, I think the hockey has the historical background and uh, hockey Kabaddi should. Have? Yes, madam. Kabaddi also has the historical background. But the way we represented India in the Olympic Games as a hockey as a player. I think hockey should be kept and hockey also fighting for its uh, re relevance in the uh, today's era of cricket but I think the hockey Kabaddi is Kabaddi, it is called as Kabaddi in Maharashtra yes, but in other parts of uh, India it is called by different names. Can you tell me different names given to Kabaddi in Andhra, in uh, West Bengal, it is called in dif by different names. Sorry ma'am, I am not aware about that. Okay, you will read about it later. Yes ma'am. So tell me that uh, you are also interested in swimming. Yes ma'am. So which of the sports is your most favorite? I don't uh, see the swimming as sports because uh, we have not given any opportunity to participa participate in a swimming in a childhood. 
I see swimming as a more as a hobby and entertainment purpose. Whenever I use I used to in my village, I go to the swim. It gives me a kind of refreshment. But as a sports per, a sports perspective, if I see, then kabaddi is my favorite. I have represented the kabaddi in my school days also and in a, a polytechnic also. Any instance you can narrate when you while you were uh, uh, holding the position of captainship? Yes. Of this kabaddi and uh, kabaddi team in school. Any yes. instance, anything which you can. Yes, ma'am. Share with us. Uh, it may seem little uh, uh, event, but uh, it is very close to my heart because uh, when uh, we have the three divisions in the tenth in my village, R is a third division, K division, uh, C division, and uh, from uh, eighth onwards and from the childhood we have been involved in the kabaddi. But when the divisions were made, we are actually planning how can we be, how can we win the annual sports game of the kabaddi it started from the day first one only so but uh, eventually what happened madam our division c divisions has very less players of the kabaddi which uh, they did not play much kabaddi before that but it was a challenge for me how can i build the team which will win the annual sports uh, uh, kabaddi in annual sports so we started preparation very early Article 142 gives a special uh, powers to the Supreme Court of India, uh, which is known uh, as a which is which which Supreme Court can use for the complete justice decree purpose. In my remembrance, it was used in a Ram Janmabhoomi case. Recently, I don't uh, know any instance instances where it has been used. Recently, you are not aware. Not aware. I am reading, but uh, I am not able to recall, madam. Is it Sorry, madam. Is it, is it uh, same as judicial overreach? What is your opinion? Do you public administration is yes, ma'am. Yes. What is your opinion about it? Yes, ma'am. There has been some instances instances where we can say the judicial overreaching has been seen in India. Uh, has been seen in India. Yes. You are going to be part of executive. Yes, madam. So, what is your opinion about judicial? Uh, judi there is a very grey space where the judiciary itself decide where they can stop and there uh, where they can go. If I quote the recent example of the football administration, where the Supreme Court go ahead with the composition of uh, committee of administration for the looking over the football World Cup, which is uh, under 13 World Cup, which is held, which will be held in India. That time, the uh, it was a transgression in the executive manner, and the FIFA uh, immediately suspended the license for the FIFA World Cup of India. Then judiciary back backstep its uh, response. So this is the kind of judicial overreach, I would say. So you think that it is good? Yes. No, madam. I I am not saying that there is a should not be a judicial privilege. There are many some grey areas where the executives unduly take the advantage of uh, not written parts or not uh, clear parts in the constitutions where the judiciary must come to uh, to preserve the liberty equality and the so basic spirit of the constitution but and there should what be balance think about the fourth pillar of democracy the media are they really performing are they really doing their job prima facie to my mind to my mind, mind madam uh, I am not saying the media is working up to the, their mark because the media in the recent years we can say they, they are, have become more uh, less critical towards the government policies. So I would say <coughs> media has the potential they can work more towards the uh, critical towards the government. Okay. What is your opinion about freebie culture? Yes ma'am. Freebie culture is a culture where the free services given by the state and it has been related to the political appeasement in front of the elections. But the state has the responsibility to uplift the marginalized people by providing some affirmative actions. So it has become very thin line between the what is affirmative actions and what is the freebies. Uh, the good freebie, it has been said what is a good freebie, what is bad freebie. But the uh, in my mind, the freebies or the actions of the government which actually lift the marginal paper, they, 
people that should be there but the executive should take care that it should not be for the political purpose or the electional purpose only so if in your own district the elections are announced yes and you see the pb culture in your own district yes ma'am pbs are being distributed then what you would do as dm as as dm of your own district okay ma'am may i take few moments ma'am uh yes ma'am uh madam uh, to my mind uh, as a dm i don't i may not have that uh, capability to uh, go against the political policies which they have taken as uh, to the my mind madam uh, implementation of the policies would be the first job of the dm so the whatever the political decision they will take uh, at the capital so freebies are banned freebies are bad in my mind but yeah, if the so as a dm implementation is entirely in your hands yes ma'am sorry madam i'm uh, unable to understand sir. okay no problem sure yes sir messi or mbappe who is your favorite mbappe why he is a growing uh, a skilled person in the field and there is one little uh, he is a fan of uh, cristiano ronaldo and i also i am also fan of cristiano ronaldo so that it attaches me with him sir more i think you are emotionally attached with him yes more than a player is. indeed sir messi is a great player he is known as a goat greatest of all time there is a no uh, such a thing but mbappe i think he is a who won this world cup Mb- messi or his goalkeeper it's a team game sir they all have uh, worked together and they have won sir acha nowadays you must be hearing about that uh, uniform civil code yes sir what do you believe it should be implemented in india yes sir i am completely in favor of implementation of the uniform civil code there should be one policies uh, to the all the religions because there is a huge discrimination in the certain religions towards the women but while applying the uniform civil code we should not neglect the religions and cultural diversity present in the particular religion sir so there should not be a water type water type uniformity because we are the country who celebrate the diversity in our religion sir so no no akshay you tell me ki what is the reason that most of the muslims oppose it i i would say the main in the muslims are opposing it because the the women who are not right. a i am spokes person she is all, almost against it she says it's a interference in our religious independence but uh, if i see the larger women in the muslim uh, religions they to my mind they would accept or they will accept this or they will promote the uniform civil court why women because it is a certain religious practices in the muslims they are very discriminatory towards the women one example of that discrimination uh, nikah nikah halala is a one such a example a government has taken the step triple talaq has been banned and uh, all the sir, in- instant say, triple talaq instant. i would say sir instant triple talaq has been banned still there is a triple talaq which can be given after the one month period one month can be given sir mm-hmm. so instant triple talaq has been banned but other such a um, uh, practices that are there as i said the nikah halal is one my point was why muslims most of the muslims why they oppose it Because do you think they are uh, not connected with the state or they are more inclined to the religion why they are opposing it okay sir uh, the thing is happened with this government there is a some kind of communication and understanding gap between the this muslim per- particular this muslim religions and the state they uh, in they might having feeling that their uh, rights and their cultural ethos can be transgreted will be transgreted by the state in future also that is why they are opposing so i would say there is a understanding and communication gap one line answer i want that uniform civil code will lead to the upliftment of muslim community in india one line i don't want the second line 
ओके सर द पॉलिटिकल एंड एजुकेशनल अपलिफ्टमेंट ऑफ द मुस्लिम विल गिव द मच नीडेड कॉन्फिडेंस टू द मुस्लिम वुमेन सो दे कैन दे कैन पार्टिसिपेट विद अ बेटर कॉन्फिडेंस इन ऑल द सेक्टर्स ऑफ द स्विमिंग यू लाइक मोर है ना यस सर इट्स योर हॉबी इट रिफ्रेशेज यू यस सर एंड इट्स एंटरटेनमेंट फॉर यू यस सर वॉट इज द कोर थिंग इन स्विमिंग इफ यू इफ यू वॉन्ट टू टेल समन की दिस इज द कोर इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस यू विल बी अ गुड स्विमर और यू कैन लर्न स्विमिंग कोर द थिंग ऑन विच स्विमिंग डिपेंड्स काम एंड कॉन्फिडेंस ऑन यूर सेल्फ एंड एंड इंडोरेंस ऑफकोर्स इन वन यू जम्प फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इन द वॉटर राइट यू मस्ट बी जम्पिंग हियर एंड देयर यस no when when you started floating for the first time what was the specific thing which you saw in yourself how you change body posture how you dive inside right sir. how you do all these things so it is a, a when the fighter in our self arises then i would say the, these things automatically comes if uh, we we have to float and akshay the core thing of swimming is breathing breathing us i am sorry sir thank you sir breathing no yes so the, i am the, i was connecting the calmness with the breathing sir because the people they get frightened and they are uh, because they are frightened they are not be able to breathe have well. you ever seen any dead body drowning in water yes sir i have seen in well drowning dead body generally floats on what drowning ha uh, going deep inside what no sir what is absent in dead body breathing yes sir right sir. Breathing is absent. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Please. Your subjects are uh, mechanical. Excuse me, sir. Your subjects are mechanical. Right, sir. Why you opted mechanical engineering at the first instance? Sir, after the tenth, I have to choose between the twelfth or polytechnic, and it was suggested the polytechnic would be the good course if you if you are going for the technical subjects later also. so i opted for the political and in 2010 sir there is a huge demand for the mechanical and there was a kind of uh, scenario where the software or it industries is quite in a crunch because the subprime subprime crisis happened in 2008 and some spill over or effect was uh, present in india also so with uh, communication with my seniors and my elders i have been suggested to go for the mechanical also that is why i have opted sir but you opted for the civil services Don't you think we are losing an engineer? Yes, sir, definitely. But uh, what your B, what is your B plan for in case? Sir, I have not prepared any B plan yet. I am very uh, confident that this time I will get through the services because uh, uh, about whenever I think about the B plan, it changes with time, sir. If I had any plan before the Corona period. that should be changed after the corona period because the much things have been changed so i have the confidence that apart from the civil services whenever i will go wherever i will go i will go i will make their good things and uh, that confidence i have because that is why i have not prepared any b plan yet sir okay don't you think uh, this uh, uh, if you pursue continue your mechanical engineering and uh, go for subject like uh, artificial intelligence and right, robotics sir. you know it would have been uh, more you know better option you have given four year five years to the engineer right sir but uh, yes the, the indeed there would be a better futures there can be a better future in a mechanical engineering also because there these modern technologies artificial intelligence machine learning has given the immense opportunity but i don't think i don't see the uh, the four years which i have given in the civil services is the best kind of thing sir it is a win win situations uh, the my personality has been developed in four years sir and i i think i have become a better person to tackle with the future and my, my life events okay how you will be utilizing your qualification into your civil services as mechanical yeah. engineer as civil service i am not an pardon sir i am not understand how will you be utilizing your mechanical engineering background qualification and experiences right. okay in the civil as a civil servant okay as a mechanical engineer we have been taught sir to think a particular problem in a uh, analytical fashion so in the four years of the course 
in a six year of the course diploma and engineering we uh, have been trained to analyze a certain uh, problem in an analytical fashion sir so that mindset has been developed very well whenever i go when i will go in administration then uh, i will understand the problem first then i will give a structured approach also the technically i am a, a quite sound person so i can use the technology in administration to improve its efficiency to reach out the people in a meantime so that is all the mechanical background will help me in administration sir okay recently yon musk you know yon musk yes sir he has given some statement about his uh, launching mobile i am not aware about sir okay sorry sir do you know something about uh, latest thing about electronic this thing electric vehicle electric vehicle what do you think what is the scope and uh, how effectively it will be uh, in indian conditions okay sir uh, to my mind sir electrical vehicle holds the immense possibilities as we have uh, we have and governments has the policies towards the uh, green such a vehicles uh, sorry um, climate uh, policies where we are going to reduce our, our emissions uh, that is why the green vehicles hold the immense possibilities in indian conditions it would be a uh, quite difficult to implement because there is a, a huge gap in a charging infrastructures people don't have uh, money to uh, to buy because electric vehicle right now they are quite uh, costier as compared to the ic engines vehicles but definitely in a long term it will hold the immense power sir immense potential sir how in it will affect indian economy okay uh, first thing sir uh, it will quite hamper on the manufacturing industries because the automobile parts which are uh, involved in the electric vehicle the transmission parts they are greatly reduced and in manufacturing sector the huge part is taken by the automobile industries so automobile industries to my mind is going to be hit by the inclusion of the electric vehicle industries uh electric vehicles at the same times will open the other opportunities in the manufacturing and other sectors but here the problem is the uh, the main uh, battery which is used in a electric vehicle the most of the part of the batteries are being imported so it may increase our dependency on the countries like china's with whom we are not holding a good relations right now uh this is uh, i am coming sir see how economically it will affect our country positive negative so it it, it has both positive and negative sir positive but you said all negative things a positive is a, sir is a long term the climate change uh, it will reduce the emissions that is the positive thing sir and how about uh, foreign exchange will it affect you said you will be uh, going for parts which will be imported right, can it yes, not sir. be developed you are a mechanical engineer in india so it can be developed in a country sir and uh, i was re reading some news uh, uh, recently in a, in a chennai one factory has been uh, installed for the lithium ion battery making it is a huge factory so it either by the time it will be making in india uh, yes sir don't you think uh, we are investing so much in um, uh, diesel and petrol in this fuel you know investing yes and sir, our foreign exchange you know we are yes sir diluted because of this with the advent of this thing electrical vehicle yes sir. don't you think it has an you know, economical impact on the indian car yes sir because the make in india uh, uh, make in india products in the automobile sectors we are uh, exporting those uh, parts and the uh, final goods that will impact on ex our exports also got my point Spartan we are sir. investing huge amount right sir in importing fuel yes sir when we will be having electrical vehicle with the advent of electric vehicle right sir in india don't you think we will be having positive economic impact in india what is what is your uh, take on that uh, we yes sir we have invested huge in the uh, petroleum refineries and all the things uh, it will adversely impact sir those industries we have which which are dependent on this but at the same times the ev market is also opens the new opportunities for these uh, industries sir 
Okay, one more question. Last question. Yes, okay, sir. You opted the six for northeast. Uh, your preference for the northeastern state is six. I have uh, seen. Yes, sir. Why? And suppose that you have been given six only. How will you deal? Sir, it is. A, I don't uh, distinguish between the zone. It is just a matter of matter of preference for me. India as a whole is a, a singular for me. Uh, it is a, just a cultural and uh, language differences are there. But I would be more than happy to learn their culture and language. I see uh, in the pictures, videos, they 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 are having very diverse culture in the northeast, sir. I would be happy to learn the languages and cultures. And uh, I am the person who was the extrovert kind of extrovert, and I I would like to engage with the people also. So I think it will be easy for me to deal with the such a thing. Perfect, right, sir? Okay, Akshay, your uh, option is public hand. Yes, sir. To start with, can you differentiate between management and administration? Yes, sir. Uh, management is a. Um, Manage, management is a handling of the people in a particular uh, set of activities which are defined over the period of time so uh, they, they it is a kind of programmed programmed decision making where the daily routines are managed with the help of uh, leaders and followers in the administration it is a group of activity where the two or three person more than two persons are involved it is the definitions given by the bernard chester bernard and uh, it is the activity where two or more people coordinate cooperated activities where the two or more people are involved so which one is more dynamic in nature administration is a more dynamic lead, uh, dynamic sir because when the administration leads it gives a kind of uh, policies and the method of dealing with the situations and management impl implement those uh, policies and the methods so should i say that it's a management is a part of administration or vice versa or these two are two different profession uh, management is a sub part of the uh, administration sir so which one is say. more dynamic more broad administration is a more broad sir okay. if i Sir. Okay, let me quote the statement coming from our FM finance minister. She said in this budget, that the way population is increasing, yes sir, and the way technology is growing, yes sir, these two are called cross-cutting development. What exactly she wanted to say? Cross-cutting development. Again, I am repeating, the way okay, population is increasing yes, and sir. the way technology is improving. So these two are called cross-cutting development. So what indications she was trying to give? Sorry, sir. No, I am not able to. I am not okay. aware about this statement. And no problem. Sorry, Take it. The employment is a big problem for India. And in recently, in his uh, speech from Palaye, Lal Kila, Prime Minister said that by 2047, yes, sir, we have to become developed developed country. Yes, sir. So without providing employment to the people, it is not possible. Yes, sir. So my question is, where is the future of India? Is a wage employment or self employment? Uh, sorry, sir. The last part. Wage employment or self-employment. Wage employment or self-employment. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Employment is a uh, indeed a uh, problem in front of our countries because the employment rate has been increasing. If I see the future of the India, I would say the, it is very bright future for the employment for India because the way the technological and entrepreneurship is developing in India, I would say India is a self-employed country or the mostly the employment which comes rather than. The people who are right now seeking the employment, they will become the provider of the employment. So, from the employees, from the employees to the employer, that journey would uh, give the develop the the outline of the developed country in 2047. So, I would see the employer uh, youth in the future of the India. Sir. So, your answer is wage employment or self? Self employment, but creation of the new employment also, sir. Okay. Suppose you are appointed at the district magistrate of Kolhapur. Right, sir. You know the things very well there. So, which employment you will try to promote among the youth? You will work towards the promotion right, of wage employment or self employment? I would promote the self employment, sir. Okay. But here you have come for job employment. Okay. There you will try to promote self employment. Do you think these two are contradictory? Yes, sir. Uh, but, sir, I would see it uh, in a different way. 
because these are the employments these are not the employ employments these are the services towards the nation and services towards the peoples but uh, the future is in my kolhapur district sir there is a immense possibilities for the self employment and entrepreneurship because uh, the, as i said the agriculture has been very flourished in our uh, region but there is a need to promote the organic agriculture in our area and it holds the immense possibility for the entrepreneurship sir okay uh, since february last year when yes. ukraine was started currencies of most of the country they yes. become weaker against dollar right sir. Okay. rupee as well right sir so but the other currency like euro etc they have become more weaker than indian currency yes it's so because of the okay, rbi's interference right sir okay. so do you think rbi should intervene in the forex market i am not getting sir uh, was what was the last line sir? why rbi is not letting rupee to depreciate further why it is intervening intervention in the of market? rbi okay uh, as i as the fm also said foreign ministers also said that rupee is finding its natural uh, natural con comparative price with the dollar and we have opted for the uh, free uh, kind of currency market where the least intervention of the rbi should be there when it will further affect our uh, um, cad and uh, forensy uh, i'm sorry sir the forest exchange reserve then only at the extreme point rbi should be intervened it is my opinion sir now the rbi has intervened so definitely what is happening ki currency of other country they became more weaker right, than sir. rather than indian currency right sir so do you think it is going to hurt the exports of india adversely sorry sir oh, sure. yes. what is the evasion of taxation evasion of taxation is a uh, going against the rules of the taxation and avoiding to pay the income taxes and other taxes sir. is it punishable yes sir what about avoidance of taxation Oh, sorry sir avoidance avoidance of taxation i think it is a to my mind sir it is a trick which is used by people to avoid the taxes they invest in some other uh, services sectors for example uh, to minimize their net payable taxes is it uh, punishable sorry sir i am not sure but i don't think it is punishable sir okay what is swift channel recently it was talks were going to swift channel Swift Channel is a international channel which uh, uh, the international transactions have happened. It was uh, laid by the Western world, prominently USA, and it has been uh, opposed by the countries like uh, Russia, China, China, and uh, more and less India also. So it is a kind of trade between two countries. The channel of transactions happened to the Swift. So Swift Channel was closed for Russia. Yes, sir. Significance of these things? Uh, because the USA is uh, propagating the propaganda that the economical uh, relations. What will be the outcome of that? So, if China was close for Russia, so it will be a, become a bottleneck for the Russia to manage their uh, trade with the other countries. But at the same time, it will uh, open the opportunity for the countries like India to trade on uh, with the Russia uh, according to their terms. so india has been trading with the russia in a rupee term it will benefit for the india sir to so rupee term you must have heard the name of vostro account no sir no sorry idea. sir one more question okay you must have heard okay yes. cpec china pakistan economic corridor yes sir it's a chinese pakistan agreement there right, was 60 billion dollar right, so what is india's concern india's primary concern sir it is going through the uh, pak occupied kashmir the okay. infrastructure project which they are going the line is going to the park occupied kashmir which india sees it is the integral and sovereign part of india and china should not invest in such a investment okay okay now one more question uh, what is basically fiscal deficit fiscal sorry sir pardon fiscal sir. deficit fiscal deficit is a deficit between the spend expenditure and income of the government then what is the revenue deficit a revenue deficit is a deficit between the uh, revenue revenue and uh, i'm sorry sir uh, it is a uh, something which is related to the capital expenditure and uh, revenue expenditure can you give two examples of capital deficits 
पार्डन सर कैपिटल टू एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ कैपिटल रिसिप्ट कैपिटल रिसिप्ट वन इज द एफ डी आई फॉरन डायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट इज द कैपिटल रिसिप्ट दिस इज ऑल्सो आई कैन रिमेम्बर इज डिस इन्वेस्टमेंट पार्ट ऑफ फिजिकल डेफिट डिस इन्वेस्टमेंट गिवज द रिवेन्यू सॉरी सर आई हैव रेड अबाउट इट बट नॉट एबल टू बिकॉज ओके द लास्ट क्वेश्चन इज इन ए सिंगल लाइन यू कैन डिफ्रेंशिएट बिटवीन सोशलिज्म एंड कम्युनिज्म सोशलिज्म एंड कम्युनिज्म कम्युनिज्म सर टू माय अंडरस्टैंडिंग कम्युनिज्म इज अ आइडियोलॉजी वेयर द स्टेट इज अवॉइडेड और कंसेप्ट ऑफ स्टेट हैज बीन रिजेक्टेड इन द सोशलिज्म इट इज क्वाइटली सिमिलर टू द सोशल to the socialism it is quietly similar to the communism but but it is not that extreme as the communist uh, communist ideology is so socialism is a thing where the equality on the basis of the income and wealth is brought and the state concept is uh, quite accepted in the socialism so the which will come first socialism or communism i think the communism comes come first because it was propagated by the karl marx in the europe and that it's a Uh, a quite uh, i would say moderate concept that is a socialism sir okay okay karl marx okay progressive development of product, uh, productive forces what is the meaning of this i am not aware of it sir sorry sir okay. then one more question right you can see rupee is getting either depreciated or appreciated totally depending on the global market right sir so what type of exchange rate india is maintaining right now is a floating or fixed it is a floating sir but managed floating sometimes we say it is a managed floating very good okay. rbi is sometimes interest at the extreme position so it is what is managed should india move to a fixed exchange rate because then indian economy will be less vulnerable i am sorry sir uh, i am not understanding it right now sir thank you sir what do you know by postcop you know postcop postcop yes i know what it, it is it is a acronyms given by bulik and urvik in public administrations it is all about the organizations uh, the principle of organizations where the each word stands for the uh, executive work p is a planning uh o for the organizations yes for the staffing d for the directing c c o for the coordinating r for reporting and b for budgeting sir perfect any question thank you thank you sir thank you thank you thank you thank you sir